Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel web learning episode where knowledge is shared. In this video you will learn how to start the SM32Q project, how to open the project in an IDE, how the work project structure is built. So let's get started. If you're unfamiliar with STM32 Cube, you can open my previous video and you can find the link right in the corner or in the information below. In this example, I'll use the STM32 L0 nuclear board where you can find also the link in the below description. So let's start. I'll click New Project. I'll choose Board Selector. I'll choose Nucleus 64 and I'll choose the L0. From the L0 we have two boards and I'll choose the L053. I'll click OK. As you can see the project is already built. All the pins of the nuclear board are already set. At this time I will not do any changes. We have two buttons we have two pins already set. One is the LD2, the green LED, and the other one is the PC13, the blue push button. I'll click Project, Settings. I'll make sure to put in a new project name. I'll choose the environment that I want to open it with. At this time, I'll use the Kyle MDK ARM V5. In a later video, I'll show how to use it for the M0 and M0 Plus. I'll go to the code generator. I'll copy only the necessary library files and I'll set all three pins as analog. I'll click OK. And again, project generate code. At this stage, I'll do open project and the system will start the Kyle. As you can see, the cube opened a few directories. The first one for the Simpsons drive for the STM32L0. The second folder has all the libraries that we set for the STM32 Nucleo. In this folder, we have all the hard drivers that are set for the SM32 Nucleo. In this folder, application user, we can find the main. And in this folder, we can see the startup file. Let's open the main. The way that the SM32 cube structure is as follows. In certain areas, you'll find that the cube opened comments where user code begin and user code end. You'll find it all over the main. The reason for this is that you, the user, can only add your code between those lines. The reason for this is that any given time, we can go back to the cube, we can change some peripherals and go back and the cube will not affect any of the changes or anything of the code that we wrote between those lines. For example, I can go back to the cube and I'll add, for example, two pins for ADC. I'll click Project, Generate Code. At this point, I'll do Close because my project is already open. And when I change to Kyle, you'll see that Kyle already noticed that something else changed my main.c. And it's asking me if I want to reload them. If I click yes, you can see that the new line was added. This line was added by the SM32 cube. And again, if I wrote any code between those lines, the cube won't affect them and won't change them. The structure of the user code that you can add are user code begin include, user code end include. 
user code begin private variables PV the user code and PV in this area the SM32 cube adds all the system clock configuration the GPO in it and configuration and the max ADC in it those settings can be found at the bottom of the project if we continue we can see that the user code begin PFP the private function prototypes and the user code and PFP user code begin zero and user code end zero those are the area where you set different functions or different prototypes or different settings just before you start the main user code begin one and user code end one this is where you put your local variables and other settings just after the main starts MC configuration has all the initialization of the HAL, of the system clock, GPIO in it, and ADC in it. User code begin to and user code end to is the area where you set different GPIOs and different settings and peripherals just before you start your while. User code begin 3 and user code end 3. Just after the user code begin 3, this is where all your code needs to be placed. And of course, your program will run between those brackets. After the main, there are all the SM32 cube system clock configurations. Those configurations, as I showed, are being called at the beginning of the private functions prototypes. So we have the system clock configuration, the ADC init that I just added, and the GPI init. If I go back and I'll remove the ADC and I'll do project generate, I'll close it because my project is open. I'll click yes because the files has been changed and I can see again that my ADC in it is gone and I am left only with the GPIO in it. If I go to the bottom I have system clock configuration and GPIO in it. Again all the ADC has disappeared. So the stm 3 d cube is very sufficient and will remove any unnecessary code. If I want I can do project, build target, and I can see I have zero errors and zero warnings. In the next video I'll show how to use the HAL functions and how to use different peripherals like the ADC, GPIO and other peripherals that are used on a daily basis. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can get more notifications when I upload more videos. Enjoy SM32.